Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm putting together a terrarium with ferns. We just did a video all about fern care and kind of some of the things that I've learned throughout the years taking care of ferns. Um, so I just kind of wanted to keep going with it because I mentioned in that video how important humidity is to the health of your ferns and how terrariums are a really good place to put them because, you know, inside these glass vases, they naturally uh, form a little bit more humidity and condensation and ferns really thrive in that kind of environment. Um, so we will link that video down below if you haven't seen the fern care video um, and you want to learn a little bit more about that I encourage you to go watch that. Um, I also wanted to show you this terrarium because I'm going to be putting the fern terrarium together pretty much exactly the same way. This is one I put together over a year ago and I was trying out something new because I don't tend to like to use gravel as a layer. And in the video where I put this one together, I explained all about that and why I don't like to do that. So we will link that video down below as well. Um, but I tried out hydrostones, which I have right over here. So this is what they are. Let me get some in my hand so you can see them. So hydrostones are made of recycled glass. They're not sharp. They're like pumicey. And what they are supposed to do, hey, Russell, what they're supposed to do is uh, absorb oxygen and then release it as the plants need it. And I just thought it would be interesting to try because I do like the look of all the layers at the bottom of a terrarium. I mean, that's one of the prettier parts about it is just seeing all the moss and the gravel if that's what you're using in soil. Um, and I've just been so pleased with how this terrarium has done, especially because I use succulents in it instead of regular plants or ferns. Um, and they have just arrived. I had to trim down this crassula just a little bit, but that's all the maintenance I've had to do. Watered it about once a month or so. Um, but I'm going to have to take Russell off the table so you can actually see what I'm going to do here. Come on, buddy. Let's start with the container first. So terrariums are typically enclosed like little microclimates that you create for your plants. They're non-draining typically. The reason why I like these, these um, I got down at the garden center, they have holes built into the top which is so nice because if you've ever done terrariums before, the condensation can form so thickly that you can almost not see the plants. And really like even ferns in that type of environment, they need a little bit of airflow in order to be really, really happy. Uh, in my experience anyway, I do see people do like fully enclosed containers that they never have to water ever and they just like thrive and do well. I've never done that before. Um, I just have had more success with this type. So like this little one right here where I've got my succulents has one air hole. No, has two. And so does this one. And I think that that's why the succulents have done so well. Had it not had any airflow, these succulents probably would not have survived. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is put my first layer down, which is going to be the hydrostones. So I've got a little bit left in this bag from last time. I want to do it thick enough to where I can see it visibly from the outside. So I've got another bag over here. I think I've got like about an inch layer there, maybe a little bit less, but I think that that's going to be just about right. So the next layer I want to do is a moss layer, um, which I also did in this one. And what that does is you put moss on top of the hydrostones and it keeps our soil from going down into those stones and making a huge mess and making it look really dirty. So I'm gonna grab my moss, which I have down here. So this is just sphagnum moss. You can use green moss. You can pretty much use whatever you want. I just had this leftover from our um, box DIY succulent vertical planter box that we just got done creating. So I wanna utilize this. I don't wanna waste it. So for our last layer, I'm gonna be using soil and I'm just using a Spoma's regular potting mix for this um, because that's what ferns will like in this situation. Like for this one right here, I used the cactus and succulent mix. You just wanna make sure you're using the appropriate soil. So I didn't bring out any kind of fancy scooper. I'm just gonna use my hands here and just make a little layer right on top of that moss. So in the middle here, because this is my reservoir, I'm actually gonna reach down in there and take out just a little bit of the hydrostones. I do think I made it a little bit thick in the center because these have full root balls on them. I will be removing most of the soil, but I wanna make sure that they're in enough soil down there that they'll stay happy. With this one right here, I basically used cuttings almost. I mean, I removed so many of their roots in the soil, which is okay for this type of plant, but this one I wanna leave the roots semi-intact. So I'm gonna make a little bit more of a reservoir here. I should have thought of that in the beginning. <laughs> that is the way I do projects, it seems like. Okay, so now I'm gonna make sure to put a moss layer back on top of those stones that I exposed, and then I can kind of push my soil over them, there. 
I think the most important thing here for this is that you make sure you have enough soil reservoir, but then you also have your nice looking layers on the outside as well. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this fern first. This is a maidenhair fern. These are one of the harder ones to take care of because they do not want to dry out really at all. If you let it dry down at all, they'll start to dry up on the ends and it kind of shocks the plant and it really is kind of a downward spiral from that point, for me anyway, in my experience. Uh, Boston ferns are also a little bit tricky. They like a lot of humidity. So I think that this is a perfect way to use a maidenhair in a terrarium. So I'm gonna just remove it from its pot and then I'm gonna set to getting all of this soil off. This is a healthy looking plant too. It's gonna be pretty. Okay, so you can see what I'm left with right there. Still, it has quite a bit of the root ball. I don't think very many of the roots actually came off um, with the soil. It wasn't super rooted in there. So I wanna have this kind of as the back of my display. I think I'm gonna only use two of these ferns. Let's kind of set it in there like that. Okay, and then before I move on, I'm gonna test the top over this to see if I need to trim anything off to make it fit better or move it from one side to the other. Gosh, that looks pretty just all on its own, doesn't it? Almost don't even need two in there. Two might be a little bit too much. Can you believe I'm even saying that? Maybe I'll try it. We'll see what it looks like. I can always take it out. Okay, so the other two ferns I have here are a Chrissy bird's nest fern right here, which are probably one of the easiest care. Actually, both of these are really easy care. This is a staghorn. Um, so very easy care. I have both of these in other containers in my house um, and they do really, really well. So I wanted something with very different texture than this maidenhair fern. And if I look at this Chrissy with like the crested leaves on the top, they have the ruffle. I think it's a little bit too similar right there. I think that this one that has the straight edge is a better contrast of texture right there. And this one's almost a little bit more blue, if that makes sense. It's got like some silver on the top that gives it that blue kind of hue. So let's try this one. Oh, you know what? Maybe I can separate it. It looks like there's like three of them together here. I'm going to see if I can separate this and just use one of the small ones. That would be ideal. Yep, look at that. Look how perfect that is. That's gonna fit in there without making it look too crowded. And then I kind of got two ferns out of the whole deal, which is awesome. So I'm gonna make a little well right here. Place that in there. I might need to add, I'm gonna just use a little bit of the soil that I took off the roots of the fern and just pack them in nice and tight here. Wow, I could not have planned that better. I didn't even take a close look at that fern to realize that. I wonder, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna push it. My natural, like my natural inclination is to pack things full. I mean, you guys know, I think I'm gonna just chill with it and maybe add some decorative. I brought some rocks and pine cones and stuff up here. So now basically the planting is done. All I need to do is kind of top dress. Like you can see with this one, I used some rocks. I had a couple of little mushroom like fairy garden accessories I put in there. And then I put some chartreuse reindeer moss just to give it a bright pop. This one, I wanna keep it a little bit monochromatic, a little just bit like kind of a darker green. Um, so I've got some just preserved sheet moss here. I'm gonna probably use probably a little bit more of the sphagnum moss and then I might tuck in, like don't you think that's pretty? couple little pine cones in there just for like nature, just make it look like it's straight from outside. So this is what the preserved sheet moss looks like. It kind of comes out in a little bit bigger chunks. It's a really nice color. So I'm gonna start with that, start packing that in around the plants um, while using a little bit of the sphagnum moss as well. So it's not just like a one color on the top of the soil. So we've got our pine cones here, tuck a couple of those in maybe like that, and then maybe a stone or two, maybe, we'll see. I kinda need to look at it from the front and see what it looks like. I'm gonna spin it around. All right. There, I think that that looks really pretty. I used three pine cones, two white stones, just to give it a little bit of brightness down there. 
and contrast. And I left a little section of soil open toward the front and I find that helpful. Like you can see, I did it on this one as well because then I can monitor the moisture of the soil without getting into the terrarium all the time to finger test the soil. I can just kind of look in there and see what it looks like. If it looks like it's dried out, I can give a little bit more water. Um, but like I said, this one right here, I water about once a month. This one I will be monitoring for the first you know month or two to see how often I feel like I need to water it. Um, typically in terrarium situations, you don't have to water near as often as you would if they're out potted in regular containers, even with ferns. But the beauty of this is that I don't have to mist these every day because these will naturally create their own humidity underneath the dome. So now let's see what this looks like. I hope you guys can see that. <laughs> it's kind of bright out here and I can see all the reflections on the glass, but boy, I think it looks really nice. Let me put the dome back on this one. So as far as light goes for this fern terrarium, I'm gonna be keeping it in a spot that's bright, but that doesn't get direct sun. So it'll actually be a little bit easier to place than this one because succulents and cacti need a lot of light, obviously. It's kind of hard because when you put a terrarium in a lot of sun, the glass intensifies the heat in the sun and it can burn your plants. So this one I was a little worried about because I just didn't want that to happen to the plants. And so far they're doing really, really well. They're in a southern facing window, but they have um, filtered light because there's a tree right in front of the window. So it kind of ended up being the perfect situation for these plants. This one, I can it's gonna be a lot easier to place because I can place it pretty much anywhere that's a bright spot. And the last thing is fertilizing, which I did talk about in the Fern Care Guide. I would use an indoor houseplant fertilizer. This is the one I showed you, but with a terrarium, I'd probably fertilize it about half as often as you would regularly fertilize your potted ferns. So about every other month through the growing season, so that's about March through September. And then in the winter months, you don't fertilize at all, just kind of water normally. And the reason for that is I don't want the ferns to be outgrowing this container too quickly. Quickly. I want to be able to enjoy this arrangement for a long time like this one right here It's been so it was a year and a month. I think ago that I planted it I'm hoping to get at least another six months to a year out of this arrangement um, Just with minor grooming like I said, I've only had to prune the crassula one time so far in an entire year um, So I'm kind of hopeful that this is going to be the same way And I'm thinking it's going to do really well just based on the success that I've had with the hydrostones in this terrarium I'm, I'm hopeful at least we will be giving you a uh, progress reports as we go along so you guys can see what it's looking like. And if you guys decide to tackle a fern terrarium, I'd love to see what you come up with. So make sure to tag me. Thank you guys for hanging out and watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.